Good morning, dwelling place. Turn online and, and wave to online. Good morning. I think that it may have been communicated to you as you came in this morning, but uh, if you didn't have time to check your email, we are going to be worshiping from our seats today. So I welcome you. There's lots of extra space. Um, every row, I can, this side of the room, we can push the chairs out a little. The short version is that it's just too hard to regulate up front, and we want the worship team to have the freedom to uh, not wear a mask, and several of them have something going on in their life that they, they need the six feet right now. So I'm not going to go into all those details because we are blessed with so many worshipers, they change every week. So just want to make sure that you saw that in the email. Also, um, the CDC changed their regulations about sickness, and so I want to make sure that you see that. If you've had any type of um, symptom 24 hours before a gathering, that's not just limited to Sundays. It's not limited to inside or outside. We're just asking you that you worship virtually and on online in those interactions. So just preferring and loving um, one another um, and that we're using the guidelines that, that are provided for us. And I, so we're not going to argue about them. We're going to work, work with them. So that current guideline is 10 days. And so if you'll just check that. If you have any questions, I'm the um, recognized uh, COVID <laughs> representative. So, All right, would you guys stand up? Yes, Lord, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you so much for this time that we have together, both physically and online, as a body of Christ to worship you. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you've poured out upon us, Lord. You've blessed us so richly, and I thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for those blessings. Uh, thank you for health. Thank you for life. And Lord Jesus, we just come before you right now to worship you and declare that you are Lord of all. So in the name of Jesus, I pray, we come. Shield, you are my defender. 
revival is in the air. You all probably know it by now. Um, so feel free to sing louder than us because we've only practiced it this morning. So, <laughs> But I think it turned out pretty well. Oh 
Press into the Lord. Just, just take a minute to just, just hear. Just rest in Him this morning. Just, just be encouraged. Just let Him encourage you this morning. Just let Him sing over you this morning.
God, or just in your spirit, just, just give him praise. Just declare who he is, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. There's none like you, God. There's none like you, God. None like you. Worthy, God. Worthy, God. Worthy, God. praise God. All the glory. It's all yours, God. It's all yours, God. We we just come before you this morning, God. We just want to yield to you. God, we just submit ourselves to you this morning, God. We just want to hear. God, we want to walk in that. What you're saying, that what you're doing, God. We, we just want to be like you, Jesus, that you just did only what you saw the Father doing, God. You spoke only what you heard the Father speaking. May we be that people, God. May we be those men and women of the kingdom, God. God, we just thank you, God. We just we just submit ourselves to you, Lord. We want to hear from heaven this morning. We just want to hear your heart this morning to build up, to encourage, to edify, to speak kindly to, God, that's your heart. So, Lord, we just thank you. And just, um, just before we transition, I just felt like uh, Kenzie had a word and, and Marguerite had something to follow it up. But I wanted Kenzie to speak it and we're going to pray. So as we were worshiping and just declaring over the Lord that he is good, I saw him coming up to each of us and looking us right in the face and saying, you're very good. Like from the very foundation of your being, you are very good. And it does not matter where you've been. It doesn't matter where you're going, but he sees you as very good and he delights in you and he loves you and you are worth it. You are worth dying for. He died on the cross for you because he saw that you are very good. And then Mar Marguerite kind of came up after that, and I think she has, you needed to hear Kinsey's word because then you need to respond to Marguerite. What I was kind of sensing was um, just that feeling of guilt that you have and shame because of the, the same repetitive thing that you kind of keep doing and you just keep beating yourself over the head. And it's like the father's like, no, I just want you to come and lay up against me. No shame. Shame can have some physical things too, you know, that attach to that. But like Kenzie said, that's keeping you from the deepest intimate love of the Father. So no shame and no hatred of self because God loves you and accepts you and come unto the Father and that will just be, yeah. So no shame. So Lord, we just... Maybe some, some, some of us need to just respond to that. And, Lord, we're just going to say the yes and amen, God. We just say, God, thank you that even from the creation in Genesis, Lord, you, you declared every day, Lord, when you were saying, Lord, let there be light or let the, let the seas and let the land form, Lord, you said it was good. And then on that sixth day, Lord, you created man and woman and you said it was very good. God, and I just agree with Kenzie's word that, God, that we would receive that this morning, God, that the very creation in whom you declared, uh, you breathed life in, it's good. And don't, don't underestimate what God declares is good. Don't, don't shy away from it. Don't, Lord, I just pray that you would just, God, supernaturally bring revelation to that for each one and that shame and guilt and the things of the past would just fall right now. Lord, that we could just, Lord, they would just fall. God, just like Paul when he, when he was on the Damascus Road and it just fell like scales, like fell from his eyes, Lord. I just pray, Lord, just right now, they would just, things would just fall from our eyes. That we would, Lord, we would be able to see clearly, hear clearly, live clearly. And so, Lord, I just pray that over us. Shame be gone. In Jesus' name, Lord, condemnation, guilt, shame, God, just would leave the house and that we would just enjoy living in your house, living with you, living in, 
with one another. So, Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for those two words. And so, Lord, we bless you and honor you this morning. Thank you for just the worship. And that God just really heard you as you were, as the worship team was just, especially that right there at the end, God was just speaking some things, declaring some things, that rejoicing. I saw him just spinning and rejoicing over us, saying, go for it. You got it. So, Lord, I just bless you, and I thank you for, God, just this, that time this morning in worship. And just pray that you would continue to speak, continue just to do uh, what you want to do this morning. We yield to you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen, amen, amen. Thank you, worship team. Amen. Good stuff, good stuff. Come on. Say praise the Lord. Hey, can you guys just turn around and extend your hands to the people that are online? And there's a lot of people um, out there. I'm looking. I thought someone had sent me a message. But, um, Matthew Hubbard is out online right now. He was going to try to come this morning, um, but um, Matthew can't touch anyone, and that's just a, not in Matthew's vocabulary. Um, <laughs> at all. Uh, so, praise the Lord. Um, if you don't know this, that Matthew was previously diagnosed with Hodgkin's, and um, they took a tumor out of his back that showed that it had returned, and that's a diagnosis um, that we're going to stand with them against. He goes in for radiation and chemotherapy uh, starting on Wednesday. It's pretty aggressive, and so we're going to pray this morning um, purposely that the tumor, all of the cancer was taken. Amen? Number two, um, we're praying for the medical staff, that the right medical staff, sorry, they, she sent me these specifically, so I want to make sure I'm getting them right. Um, the second thing is that um, he's valued. I know that Kathy deals with this a lot, but if you don't know, Matthew has a, um, a diagnosis called RTS, and to a lot of people, um, RTS, if you have RTS because it's not curable, then you're not worth the attention at the hospital. And I don't think she's making that up. I think that when they have to weigh things, um, that she's getting weighed in a balance, not in, a, in God's priority. Um, number two, she said that there's not been any relief to the medical staff um, at UVA because there's no traveling nurses. And so um, they're exhausted. And um, not just, you know, just in there every day. And so... Um, the other situation is that they are housing a lot of precarious people to get them off the streets um, in the hotels, and she can't find a hotel where she feels protected from the atmosphere. So can you guys just extend your hands to Matthew? And if you're online, I'm going to ask you to just position yourselves and pray for Matthew. Lord, we thank you that you are Matthew's deliverer. Lord, we thank you that Matthew is a fountain of joy. He's a uh, a wellspring of joy. He is a wellspring of life. He's a testimony that when the, the world says that he's not going to live, that he's lived. When the world says that he's not going to overcome, he has overcame. And Lord, that he continues to worship you. He continues to testify in your name. And so, Lord, as they pack the car and as they go a return back to UVA, we say you're preparing a place. You're preparing the people and, and, Lord, we say that they're going to go in there and they're going to be amazed. They're going to be amazed that they see that the, the cancer has been inoculated and only you will get the glory, that, that he will be free and clear in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good, good stuff. Hallelujah. Uh, another great report is the kingdom expanded by two last week. Yeah, come on. You can give a shout. You may have seen online George testified that there was a promised baby born at the end of the week, Josiah. Am I getting this correct, Josiah? And at the beginning of the week, Aaron Goodhart. Am I got my dates right, or was it last week? And it was Monday, right? It was before. So give the Lord a shout. Healthy babies, healthy mamas. So You'll want to see online um, that the... Uh, that we have a Joel meeting. It was moved to Thursday. That's not a mistake. Thursday the 13th. 
Um, the Craig West Illumination Weekend starts on Thursday, but it's uh, later in the evening, so make sure you sign up for that. Um, we did send out an email this morning, so I want to make sure that you got that about some changes in relationship to on-site gatherings. So I want to make sure that you see that. Particularly, there's been a change to um, if you're having any type of sickness symptoms or you're with other people. And so I'm just going to ask you to take a look at that. If you don't get email, I'll certainly give it to you. Um, there are some people that are going to get free coffee today because while we're not serving coffee, we made a commitment to brew coffee, and it's good as saints to keep your word. And because I bought this coffee when it started in faith. So, um, and so we, we, the church gets a subscription. So I'm waiting to see. I thought Mark was going to, he might send me a name online. But the Lord told me, you know, just going down this center aisle, the Spiveys and the Richards, the Robertsons, do you guys drink coffee? I can't remember. So give a shout to, you know, uh, you can watch the service recorded. Mitch is going to come. You can watch the service recorded, but you don't get free coffee if you watch the replay. So there are two people online that will get it. Mark may, may have pushed it online. So Mitch is freshening his breath for this microphone. He's <laughs> trying to get the gum out of my mouth. Um, well, um, it's kind of interesting we just really had felt the Lord kind of, as we were planning uh, this Sunday, we were trying to figure out kind of what to do. Um, you know, we kind of planned some things I was going to speak. And, and then Marguerite kind of had mentioned that she had some friends coming up from, uh, well, they were in North Carolina, but they were coming up from North Carolina, visiting North Carolina. And they had been out to Bethel for three years and did the uh, internship and, um, and, hey, you know, maybe we could meet and kind of hang out. They have a heart for leaders. They have a heart for uh, to minister just in, into the body. And um, it was really cool. Um, we got to meet um, Matt and Shireen Cagle, right? As I said, right? Cagle. And, you know, have you ever met just people and kind of, a, you know, you kind of hang out with them a couple hours and you just know immediately their family? Have you ever been? You, know, you got that? You, you've been there? And, and I've met... It's really cool. I've had some people, especially in my life, where, you know, I haven't seen them for 30 years, and you see them, and they just, you just get right back on track, and it just felt like those are, these are those type of people, you know, that you just get in that place, you, you haven't even met them, but you know you feel like you've known them for a good while, and, and um, so we um, kind of just adjusted some, and uh, they're, in just a second, they're going to come and share. I wanted, um, Jared's going to come up for just a few minutes, um, because we're going to do some things different. We're just going to kind of flow in what the Lord has this morning. I might share some, I might not. Um, but at the same time, we're just going to give total freedom to uh, Matt and Shireen. They're going to come and share some words. But I wanted to kind of, they operate in the prophetic. They operate in some 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 of those giftings. And, and I, you know, sometimes, you know, I don't know who, who comes in and out of dwelling place all the time and where you've been or, or how much you've been involved in in churches that operate in the different gifts of the Holy Spirit and things like that. So I always kind of like to give a little bit of a, of a kind of a teaching or a, a instruction or a encouragement of what's going to be going on and how they're going to operate. And so I wanted Jared, just because he does it so much better than I do for sure, um, he's just going to share just a few minutes, just kind of what, what's going to happen in terms of where we're going and, and, and kind of how to participate in that. Because uh, the, the worst thing you can do in these such situations is be a spectator. I don't, I'm pretty sure God never calls us to spectate. Anybody, I mean, God always is calling us to be in the game. And maybe in the game for you is to be agreeing or be aware or be uh, open to receive uh, what maybe the Lord would share this morning, whether it be corporately or they might give individual words. And so I just want us to be prepared, be in the game, you know, not be spectating this morning. So Jared's going to share just a few minutes, and then I'll introduce him. Hey, good morning. Um, so I'm going to try to be concise. Um, there's a lot that I could say, but we obviously don't have time for that. Um, so um, 1 Corinthians 14 is always a foundation for all of this. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, 1 tells you do not despise um, 
to earnestly desire spiritual gifts. I guess I should read um, so that I don't make it up as I go. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, um, one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands. But in his spirit he speaks mysteries. But one who prophesies speaks to men for edification, exhortation, and consolation, or literally comfort. Um, so those are the three foundations that we operate on in the prophetic here at, at Dwelling Place. Um, every word that will be spoken will be within that context, edification, exhortation, and comfort. Um, edification literally means, sorry, um, literally means to build up. Um, exhortation is to call alongside, while comfort, most of us know comfort. It's just someone coming along and consoling you, coming into something that you're in or, or being with you in a moment. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, I think it's 24, um, says that, but if all prophesy, the secrets of a heart are disclosed and a man falls on his face and declares that there must be a God. So there's an aspect of the prophetic that has to do with the secrets of the heart being disclosed. Um, there's an aspect of the prophetic that has to do with foretelling of future events. You see it with Agabus. He tells Paul, if you go on this trip, your hands are going to be tied behind your back, right? And everybody tells Paul, you shouldn't go. And Paul rebukes them and says, no, I'm going. God's just telling me what to expect, right? Um, all that's within edification, exhortation, and comfort. Um, so don't be afraid. Um, you're not going to be told that you're going to die in a year. Um, that's not edifying, right? Um, you're not going to be told that God's taking your ministry away. That's not exhorting. It's not calling you into action, right? Um, God speaks rebukes. He does things like that, but that is not for today. Um, so just wanted to lay that foundation. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5. Um, what is it? I can't remember where it's at right now. Um, 519, I think. Um, let me look it up real fast so I can tell you. Um, 1 Thessalonians 519. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterance, but examine everything carefully and hold fast to that which is good. So literally, every word that is spoken in 1 Corinthians, it says, we know in part and we prophesy in part. When the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. So right now, um, this is people that are hearing God. They're going to say what they feel like God is saying to you, right? Um, First Thessalonians tells us, do not despise it, but examine it all carefully. Hold it, examine it, weigh it out. If it feels like God, hold on to it. If it's not God, let it go, right? Um, I could go into a whole lot of stuff about how to receive a prophetic word and what to do with that, um, but we don't have time today, today to, to cover all that. Um, so, main gist is that, um, 1 Corinthians 14, edifying, exhorting, comforting. It says that one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but one who prophesies edifies the church, right? Because the church is built up through prophecy, because there's understanding that comes, it's not a mystery. Um, you may have people that come and tell you dream tongues, right? They come and say, I had a dream about you last night, and there was a purple bunny that had three balloons, and they were polka dot, um, and you're like, what does it mean? And they're like, I don't know. All right, it's a dream tongue. It's, under, it's not understandable. There's no interpretation. You can't be edified, right? So there won't be anything that we're going to do or just leave you hanging in this big, huge mystery, right? Um, sometimes there is a part, though, right? Somebody may look at you and say, I see an apple. And they may have no idea what that means. Maybe that's for you to go back to the Lord with, right? Um, so, okay? Is that good? All right. Um, anything else? Is that the gist? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's a good idea to pray. Um, God, I prayed it this morning. Um, I just pray it again, God, that you've said over and over that peace is a potting soil for revelation, God. God, I just ask that an atmosphere of peace would come. God, like a blanket. God, we, we bought Aaron one of those weighted blankets, God, that it just that it would weigh, lay on him, God. He could feel the weight, God. We ask for peace to come like that, God. We would tangibly feel your peace, God. God, we just ask that unbelief and doubt would leave in Jesus' name. In Romans, it says, if prophecy, then prophesy according to the proportion of your faith. So, God, we just declare that there would be an environment of faith, God. God, that you release faith in the room, God. And, God, I just declare that this is a safe environment, God. 
a safe environment. I know that there's aspects of favor. I know there's aspects of, of relationship and lots of things that go into this, God. But God, for today, we just ask that there would just be an abundance of faith, abundance of faith to speak and an abundance of faith to receive. And God, we just ask for, for clarity for Matt and Shereen, God. Just ask for clarity in their minds. God, and I just speak just a release of freedom over them, God. That if there are words to speak, that they speak. And if there's nothing, that there's nothing. Um, God, there's no performance. There's no expectation on them right now, God. Other than hearing you and just being a picture of who you are right now. And we just release them to do that. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, yeah, I, I just agree with that. You know, I think a, a couple times I may remember early on, because I was, I, was I was a real greenie in relationship to Holy Spirit and stuff of that category. Uh, right when I came to know the Lord, obviously, we met Rick, and, um, you know, if you've been around Rick, he, he pushes that. <laughs> I mean, he's going he's gonna to push into that, and I didn't always like to be pushed into that, um, but there was just several times where, man, the Holy—I mean, somebody gave me a prophetic word, and and I didn't even—and I didn't even know what they were saying at the beginning. So one of the things I like to do is I'm like, if I don't quite understand it right away, I just kind of put that right on my kind of shelf that I look at maybe as I go to bed or as I get up and go, all right, Lord, what are you saying about that? You know, is there is there anything that you're saying? And I'm serious. There's been a couple of them that you know maybe five years later I would realize oh my gosh, you know, I'd wake up and go, man, that's what that was, that word came about, you know, so, you know, don't, under, don't underestimate what God might do as he speaks, and, and so I, I do say that, you know, just, just, just rest, and, you know, it's just the atmosphere of rest and encouragement this morning, so I want them to come up, um, uh, this is Matt and Shireen Cagle, and so they, they met Marguerite, um, Marguerite, I, I love, you know, a couple of weeks, or a couple of months ago, maybe a while ago now, uh, when I spoke on the, that series, you know, the yes, you know, saying yes, you know, her yeses keep coming back <laughs> into play. It's so funny, you know, she said yes, you know, when the, the whole uh, testimony about Costa Rica, and she said yes, Yes, I'll go to Bethel, which then meant, yes, I'll go to Costa Rica, which then meant, no, I won't lead a, a group back to Costa Rica, which led to a, yes, I will lead a co group back to Costa Rica. But then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Matt and Shireen were their, her small group leaders, I think, right, At, when she got out there. And then all of a sudden, you know, here's another example of your yes, you know. We have amazing people that get to come, and we get to enjoy and part of, be part of our family. And we, so we thank you. I just want to honor you guys. These, um, Matt was 24 years right in the Air Force, and Shireen was five years in the Air Force. I just wanted to honor. <laughs> I just wanted to honor that, and, um, and thank you so much for both of your service. Um, she got into the service of raising kids. I think that's why she got back out. But, um, man, you know, 29 years you guys gave uh, to this country. And so we bless you guys for that. And thank you for it. So I just want to pray for them. I'm just going to release them. We're just kind of going to go and see where the Lord takes us this morning. So, Lord, we just thank you for Matt and Shireen. Lord, we just thank you for their heart to just come, Lord. And I, as I've already just spent some time with them over the last couple of days, God, just seeing their heart is just a to encourage and to build up the body. God, and so, Lord, I just pray for the words of our, our hearts, the meditations of your heart, God, would just be on their heart, God, and that the declarations of, on your heart would be on their heart. And so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for their service, God. We, we honor them. God, thank you that, Lord, even that is a place that they get to stand and declare your goodness and declare your greatness, God. And and that favor would be upon them, God, everywhere they step, everywhere they go. And so, Lord, we thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. I think, I don't know. Is it on? You sound like Can you're you on. Can you hear me? Oh. I hear you. <laughs> okay. Wow. I hear your voice, Lord. It sounds like my wife. <laughs> Come on this side. Um, You'd be my right-hand lady. Um, 
like he said, we've been married for 24 years, and we have five children. Our oldest is 23, and our youngest is... Um, 14. 14. So, and, um, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. So the very, very first thing I want to start off with is everybody kind of wants to know, do you hear from God? And the answer is yes. And you hear from God in a lot of places. And earlier today, I was in the bathroom. And so you're kind of like, ah, that's where inspiration comes from. And there was two gentlemen in the bathroom, and if this is you, let it ride. <laughs> but one of them, he's fixing his hair, and the other guy looks at him, and he's like, oh, how does it look? The other guy says, you look good. <laughs> that is a word from the Lord. So turn to your neighbor and look at him and say, you look good. <laughs> you look good. Um, God is in a good mood. Hey, you on the online audience, we're going to look at you and look across the room. You look good. Get that. Mm. So, so that is a word from the Lord today. The other thing I want to remind you is God is in a good mood. Say, God is in a good mood. God is in a good mood. I know we get into the Bible sometimes, especially in the Old Testament, and it's like, fire, hell, brimstone, and you get a little scared. But then there's grace. That blood on the cross and then the power. Everybody say, Power. The power that rose Jesus from the grave is in you. That power that comes up is coming out today. And I get a little excited. So, His Southern was, Baptist roots woo! coming out again. <laughs> so I was born and raised in western North Carolina, which is just a hop, skip, and jump down the road. But then um, we actually ended up at Bethel in California for a word that we did not get from a prophet on the stage. Because I was sitting there, and this prophet came to our town, and we're like, well, God, I was in a season of transition. How many of you all have been in a season of transition? Oh, you, we can relate. So we're seeking God, like, Lord, what do you want to speak to me today? You know what, God? And I kind of threw it out there. Have that man call me and Shereen up, and you know what? I'll drop everything. Pack everything up. Four of our five kids are still at home, and we're going to move wherever you want us to move. But you have to send them and call us up. And then God said, why do you need to hear his voice? Mine's not good enough. Ooh, that's one of those you tuck away for a moment and you kind of look and say, God, I'm going to hold on to that. And then Shireen, a couple of weeks later, is like, hey, they were talking about this school of ministry in California. And I'm like, oh, you don't say well, they've also got a school down in Atlanta. That one's just right down the road. And God spoke again. Would you like it bottled up? Or would you want it straight from the source? So we packed up our family and moved to California. And kind of like Jesus and Nineveh, can anything good come out of California? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> and I thought, we'll only be there a year. Three years later, God is still moving. Mm -hmm. He's working mightily. Mm -hmm. And that's my two-minute synopsis. <laughs> Go for it. Well, when Marguerite, um, when we were coming to visit her, she, she was talking about her church, and we thought, oh, we'll see. We'll send a video. Um, but we started praying for you guys, and we started um, asking the Lord what he had for you. And um, I just saw these, um, this open field with um, these trees that have been cut down. And then I saw the Lord going in and taking out the roots that didn't belong and opening up like this huge platform. And the soil was so good. And then I saw him putting pillars. So I just saw him putting strength in the places that you guys have um, cultivated and struggled with and um, have faced in the past with COVID and all the different things that you faced. I just see the soil that is so good. And the prophetic, like just being here, like sometimes you go into an environment and when you talk about the prophetic, it's, you know, you kind of met with, um, but just what Jared was saying today was, is just amazing. And um, so I, even this morning during worship, I just saw the Lord um, holding your leaders just right in their hands. And, I, and I've, I felt like the Lord said, you can trust them. They all believe in you. They love you. They've prayed for you and you belong here. I, I just felt like there's such a belonging of uh, that the Lord was doing and and our hearts today is just to um, my goal my heart with what I've been praying is just that you leave here knowing that God loves you just for you and and just the way you are 
Um, so I don't. And we've already seen a prophetic act happen today. Yeah. As Jared was standing up here and he was giving his word, Aaron heard his voice. That's my dad's voice. Mm. He came and he stood right in front of the speaker and he's like, I hear my daddy. Oh my goodness, my dad's right there. I can touch him. Did you see what happened next when Aaron ran? He grabbed onto his father's legs and he held on. He knew he wouldn't be kicked away. He knew that he would be fully accepted, fully embraced, mm. and loved unconditionally. And, okay. So the things that um, I was seeing this morning for you guys, um, I kept thinking about like the spirit of suicide. And um, I, I really saw the Lord saying that it's not just lives, like physical death that the enemy was after, but it's, it's your purpose and destiny. And I really felt like the Lord wanted to awaken your purpose and destiny inside of you. And um, so I, I kind of want to um, do a prophetic act, if I can just... Um, I kind of want you to, like, take the morning out of your eye. And I have a scripture, sorry. <laughs> um, the scripture that God gave me, it was in Song of Solomon. And, um, you know, uh, where it says, Arise, my love, come, spend time with me in the clefts of the rock. And um, in Song of Songs 4, um, it says, Awake, O north wind, come blow, O south wind. And I looked it up in the Passion Translation, and it says that may your awakening breath blow upon my life until I'm fully yours. Breathe upon me your spirit wind. Stir up the sweet spice of your life within me. Spare nothing as you make me your fruitful garden. Come, um, hold nothing back until I release your fragrance. And I, and I see God blowing on each one of you and, and blowing on the seeds and the fruit in your life. And you're letting out this sweet, sweet fragrance. And it's not just for the person next to you. I, I see him using you in the community, in your work, in your job. And, um, and he says, come walk with me until I am fully yours. And God wants to make you fully yours. And so I just wanted to like, take the morning out of your eye, like when you wake up in the morning. God is blowing on your spirit. He's blowing on your soul today. And he's awakening your purpose in you. There's more destiny than you think. There's dreams in your heart that sometimes gets buried. And I see him just blowing on that. And he says, awake, my love. Come away with me. Come hear what I have for you. There's more for you than just what you think. There's more to this life than what you faced in, in the past. And so I just want to just like do a stretch, like stretch, like just yeah. stretch and awaken. Awaken my spirit, Lord. Yeah. Just awaken these hearts. I just see destiny. Oh, I, I felt that. I felt that. And um, if I can, um, this man right here um, in the, I don't know your don't name. You yeah. What's your name? Luke. Luke. Luke, can you stand up? Uh, yeah, sorry, at the camera. But Luke, I just, um, uh, I just saw the muscles on you. Like the Lord, all the things that you have fought for, the spiritual muscles, sorry. Um, <laughs> And, and, and the physical muscles, but all the things that you have fought for, I just see the Lord saying, good job. I just see his pride for you, that he, um, he just loves you so much. And as a father's voice, I just hear him saying, good job. And I see you not only, um, I even got a picture of a butterfly. I know that's normally for women. Um, but I just saw you in that phase where, like, you're coming out of this caterpillar the transition. But I, Lord, I see the Lord placing people around you. To, to cheer you on and to help you get out of that. But I just see community, and I see you being somebody that cultivates that community. And as you receive that help, I see you bringing so much strength to other people. So God bless you. Bless you. I love muscular butterflies. <laughs> and there's some things that we're going to say that's going to be a little hard to kind of understand. You're like, wait a minute. What does that really mean? And just like Jared was saying, there's some things that you've kind of got to, we, in the Bible it talks about a Selah moment. Everybody say Selah. Selah. Selah is at the end of the song, it's like, man, there was a lot of words in that song that I'm still just kind of chewing on. And it's okay to just sit back, rest in it, and resonate. Something I want you guys, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Isaiah 52. 
verse 6 this morning. Isaiah 52, verse 6. I feel that any time we come together, the word of God is speaking. It is powerful. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. I love swords and muscles. It speaks to me. But in Isaiah 52, 6, it says, Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. God is still speaking. Amen. From my roots, everybody's like, the, God worked for six days and then he rested. And then a lot of people seem to think he's still resting. He's up there on a lazy boy recliner just letting the thing spin. <laughs> but no, my God is strong. He is powerful. He is mighty to save. He's still saving every day. So what I hear him saying today he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will not abandon or let you down. And I'm not going to ask you to stand up, but if you are in your living room and you're alone and you want to stand up and this is for you, just stand up and receive what God is about to say. Because he is a father to the fatherless. When I was young, I saw my dad in the carport, and I ran out, and I sang to my dad. I'm like, Dad, you are awesome. You are good. And my dad turned to me, and he said, wow, you only sing like that? You could sing better. And I get a little shaky because that kind of hurt my heart for many years. But you know, now I sing to a God that his arms are open. And now I have a chance to be the father that opens my arms wide. And so there's some fathers and even mothers in this room that God is saying, your arms are able to stretch out. It's not a sign of weakness. I had a tissue earlier. <laughs> to allow someone to come in into your heart. Mm -hmm. And so as a father, if that has happened to you, I'm going to say two words that you may not have heard from your dad. I'm sorry. Hmm. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I rejected you. I'm sorry I was not there for you. But there is a new word from God today that's saying, I am here. I will never leave you nor forsake you. There is a covenant between us. And in one of the songs, it was saying, this is the very air I breathe. He lives inside of me. He's saturated and infused. Fire inside your veins. Say those words. Fire inside my veins. God is moving heaven and earth to connect with you and stay connected. There's some connection happening in this room and I want to call out some people I've made eye contact with, and you're like, oh, no, he just, saw me. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a young lady on the third row. You're wearing black. Would you please stand up? What is your name? Twyla. Twyla. God bless you in the name of Jesus. I see you as an artist. God is moving things and especially stirring creativity in your life but not just so that you can create his magnificence and allow his glory to move through you. I'm not sure what the medium is, but I hear the word teacher also. And with the teacher, he's, he's able to use different categories and infuse this teaching to just launch other people so that they understand the love of the Father. So we bless you with that. There's also Corinne. You, you were highlighted the other night. If you can stand up. God doesn't make things too complicated for us. And I love now seeing your family and that you do have kids. This makes a little more sense. Because I saw kids, and then I heard two words, snacks and sustenance. There are some snacks that we can take, and I believe God has given you spiritual snacks. And a mom is always ready. 
And God has given you these saddlebags and backpacks with snacks for people along the way. And he's using your words. That word infuse and saturation is not unhealthy snacks. It's very healthy. And I, I just see God downloading more of wisdom, his, his godly wisdom into your life to impart those spiritual snacks to help people along the way. We bless you with that. Amen. Um, the one thing that's on my mind real quick is um, tomorrow's our 24th wedding anniversary. And if, if I would love for the married couples to stand up, even if you are married, to stand up. I mean, if your spouse isn't here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and there's a couple things that the Lord has done in our lives in the last three years, but um, one thing has revolutionized the way we fight. <laughs> it's okay to fight. <laughs> but um, I want you to look your partner in the eye. If you have, if not, if, just close your eyes and pretend they're here. Just look them in the eye and, and, and repeat after me. Say, I bless your spirit. I bless your spirit. To connect with, to the Holy Spirit. To connect with the Holy Spirit. And receive everything God has for you. And receive everything God has for you. I bless you with love. I bless you with love. Unconditional love. Unconditional love. I'm in covenant with you. I'm in covenant with you. And I love you. And I love you. <laughs> I bless all of your... Uh, for me, when I do that, like we could be in a fight, and he's like, honey, I bless your spirit, and it just shifts. <laughs> but um, I had a word for Joe. Um, sorry, I'm trying to stay in the camera, but I just, you've been on my mind just yesterday, and I just see you um, spearheading. I see at the tip of the spear, and I see God just using you to change a nation, and I believe it's the... the this nation. I believe you have a heart for the U.S., and I believe God is, is using your zeal, and um, just there's like an evangelistic, charismatic thing about you that people are drawn to what you say, and I just see souls, like lines and lines of souls, being saved because of your heart and what you contend for and, and the cost you pay to be in revival. So I, I just bless you. Do you have any more? Something else I see. Something, one, two, three. Hey, good. Welcome back. Something else I see. Uh, we heard this wonderful testimony where a guy had his pocket knife, and it was really cherished. It was handed down to him. But then he was in a motel room, and he lost it. Could not find his knife anywhere. And he goes, God, I want my knife back. And almost out of nowhere, it just drops onto the bed. What God is doing today is restoration. Things that were lost or stolen, he's restoring today. Yes. So I'd like you to hold out your hands. Anyone that's lost anything tangible, whether it be a pocket knife or watch, money. Oh, can I share a testimony that came from that? Yes, ma'am. We had a friend, Chris, that she, um, she posted on Facebook that she lost her bike. Somebody just stole her bike. And so people were posting, and, and somebody posted, I want my knife back. Like two seconds later, somebody posted, I just saw your bike. It was next to a tree next to my place where I live. And so God gave her her bike back just immediately. Instantly. Instantly. So even now, even now, this hour, God is restoring. There's family members, too, that may be out there. God is reconciling, redeeming. Hold out your hands. In the name of Jesus, we want our things back. Mm -hmm. What was stolen will be restored. Mm -hmm. And God is giving double for your trouble. Come on. Double for your trouble. In Jesus' name, amen. That's good. That I got the scripture that said, um, John 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God is giving you life. Double. Back. Yes. Abundantly. 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 Everybody say abundantly. abundantly. Yes. Amen. Yes. Keep going. Let's get mm. All right. We're going for the kind of hand signals in case you're reading that online. 
And I'm not sure if you guys can see us online or you're just listening via radio, but one of the things I heard God say, and especially there's somebody online that just got up to go to the refrigerator and go get something to drink. And there may be a couple of you guys. And I think it's really neat because, yeah, I'm talking to you. They're like from the kitchen looking back right now. Like, <laughs> no. Put down the Cheeto. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, no, that wasn't me. God's watching you. He knows. And this word is for you. As you're getting ready to get that drink, Jesus sat down next to a woman at the well. And he goes, come and drink, and you'll never thirst again. So I'm all about prophetic acts. There's some of you that right now that are a little thirsty. So if you want this for you in the sanctuary or online, hold out your cup. And you can take one of them little sippy cups, or you can get a big one. Yeah, <laughs> some's got a mega gulp over here. That's a big one. So God, right now, we hold up our cups. They're empty before you, but Lord, we know you're about to fill them to the overflowing, that abundance. So God, we want to take a sip, just a sip right now. Start sipping. Ooh, you like that, don't you? All right. You can drink a little more. Keep drinking. Turn it up. Yes, I like that. Woo! Sorry. I get a little excited when we start drinking from the Lord. It is so good. Okay. I have something for Anne-Marie. Um, I just have a scripture to read to you. And I just heard, I keep hearing the Lord say that you're a world changer. You're going to change the world. And um, the scripture that I got for you was in um, Isaiah 43. Um, but now this is what the Lord, your creator says. He who formed you, he put you together. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you go... Um, through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you, for I am the Lord your God. I am your Savior. And I just, I really felt the Lord on your life. Like, no matter what you walk through, I just see him walking so close to you with your hand. And even when he feels far, I just see you looking up, and he's right there to see you. So I have no doubt that you're going to change the world. Absolutely. World changers. Mm. I love making eye contact over here because they kind of look away. They're like, yes, no, yes, no, yes. I want it. No, I don't. Mr. Witness, please stand up. <laughs> and I'm also going to ask my friends, Mike and Phil, will you guys stand up, please? Is it Phil? Yes, I'm good. <laughs> God has given me a strong memory. I declare that. If you guys will extend your hands, I want to bless this witness. As he bears witness of the Lord and all the great things he has done. But he's not done. He's still doing. What I see God doing in your life is just like these men are evangelists. They are walking forth boldly. You are standing strong everywhere you step. God has given you boots with traction that you are going to gain more traction. And instead of walking, he's allowing you to run up the steepest incline. And even better yet, you're getting to the top of the mountain. You're like, yes, I've overcome. He said, no, we're not done. Check your back. I've given you a backpack. And you're like, whoa, where did this come from? There's a jet pack in your backpack. Get ready to soar. <laughs> so we want you to mount up with wings as eagles. You're ready to rise, and you're going to be sending out all around, not just this community. God has taken you into the world to bear witness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Receive it. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate that. I'm still here. I love it when she's like, no, go ahead. I'm like, all right. So this one goes out to a lady that's not able to be with us right now. Her name's Bev, and I got to see her the other night, and oh, I just loved her heart. So Bev, if you're there watching or watching the rerun, not rerun, we know what that's about. Bev, I saw the most amazing things, and this is something that's neat because it was, I heard God saying and showing spring chickens. And if you've ever seen a spring chicken, they're little and cute and fuzzy, but they chirp, 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 chirp. But what I also saw was peeps. And if any of you have ever had Easter candy, those little marshmallow things, 
But God did the most amazing thing in you, Bev. He put you in a microwave like a peep. And this is something you can try at home, kids. I'm telling you, you hear it all the time. Don't try this at home. Try this one at home. Take one of those peeps and put it in the microwave, and you're going to see what God is tangibly doing in Bev. He is growing her exponentially. Everybody say exponentially. exponentially. So, Bev, I see just like those peeps, God is growing you, and there's this, it's kind of gooey, but it's so beautiful because you are able just to, to squeeze people together. And uh, if you've ever tasted peeps, they're delicious. There's so much sugary goodness and sweetness. And that woman just exudes, and it's just coming out of her. It's the, the sweetness of God. And everybody just take a deep breath right now. There is a sweet-smelling savor just for God. And he is coming through this, this atmosphere, releasing it upon everywhere you go. You carry the fragrance of the Lord. I have something for this lady, um, purple and pink. What's your name? Ellen, okay, I just, um, I, I have a scripture for you, and it says, how beautiful and delightful on the mountains are the feet who bring him good news, who announce peace, who bring good news of the good tidings, who announce salvation, um, you're, the Lord your God reigns, and I just was like taking note of your feet, and I just saw, um, I saw you walking in purpose, and I saw you walking in the Lord's purpose, yes. and um, he has gone, he's gone behind you, and he's gone before you. Um, you have you've leaned, you've trusted in him, and you've acknowledged him, and he will direct your path. I just see you go into high places. Um, I see you go into places where um, other people won't go and, and minister to those that, that might um, feel um, discarded by other people. I just see you carrying a ministry that you bring hope back to people that um, would otherwise be um, overlooked by by other people. So, bless you, bless your heart, bless your ministry. Um, God's got a really good purpose for your life. Bless you, Lord. Bless you. Now, this is a test to see who remembered what they actually wore today, and then the guys that have to check and see what am I wearing. If you are wearing a black shirt, please stand up. <laughs> All right. Mighty, mighty, mighty. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, you are the watchman on the wall. God has given you the tip of the spear. You are the warriors. You are vigilant. You are always ready. And the things I see God doing amongst you is the things that you've already been asking, you've been praying for, diligently seeking after, hold out your hands. <laughs> the other night I had them say, oh, there's three envelopes. For you watchmen, watch women, God has given you a basket. It's a huge, huge basket saying everything you have asked, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Mm -hmm. They are availeth, especially you, sir. Especially you. Yes, you. <laughs> A little at me. Yeah. <laughs> so in the name of Jesus, all that they have asked, all that they, beyond they've asked or imagined, God, give it to them. Pour out fresh, none of the used, but totally restored. Mm -hmm. God, give them all that they've asked for. And Lord, open their eyes to see the abundance that you have and allow it to overflow supernaturally. God, remove the veil in their life. Allow them to see clearly all that you have in store for them, their families, and their communities. In Jesus' name, amen. That man, can you stay standing? Um, yeah, you right there. I just saw God put like this sword in your hand, and um, you are a forerunner. I see God taking you to places that other people haven't been um, when we first got married, God, oh, we went to my parents' house in Hawaii. I grew up in Hawaii, and um, he had, like, he had a machete, and my parents were like, what is he going to do with that? And he went through the highest sugar cane, and he started just making a path. And I see God using you to make a path for other people, for people, the things that you're contending for and the, um, the, the things that you have prayed. I see the Lord using you 
to cut a path for others to follow. And um, it might be dark sometimes, but I, I see the Lord being your light and being the ones to, to guide you where you need to be. So, Stay standing. <laughs> the verse that we're, I was reading earlier and that she even said, beautiful are the feet, which is sort of in that same part. Isaiah 52, that watchmen shall lift up their voices. I see God strengthening your vocal cords and loosening your lips. He's given you a new song, not just upon your mouth, but upon your spirit. God is going to use your voice mightily through writing, through even creating songs. I see songs, hymns, and spiritual phrases because it doesn't have to be put to music to resonate. It doesn't have to be put to music to resonate. Your words are powerful. They are life because God has given them to you. Amen. Bless you with that. Amen. I really like it when my wife blesses the children, but she's like, no, go for it. So if you're under 10, we'll get to you if you're teenagers. We love you too. But if you're under 10, please stand up. 10 and unders, please rise up. Um, It's hard to disturb your comfort. Uh, Can I ask you to hold out your hands just like you're about to receive something and I can pour it into your hands? There you go. God, we want to just bless these mighty ones, all these little ones around the room. I see you. God is putting gloves on your hands because he's going to make you workers in this field. He's stirring up things in you to give you more than the muscles and the ability. He's given you the strength and endurance. He's given you the power, the might of the almighty God in your hearts, in your minds, in your entire being. We bless you today, mighty ones, yes, to release worship on this land. The glory of the Lord is here today because of you, and it is for future generations. Mm -hmm. So that your children's, children's, children's to a thousand generations will remember the seeds that are sown in each of you. That you will walk forth and know that he is God. We bless you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We will see that. Come on. I need a moment on that one. I see a worship leader. (laughs) For those that are online, there's a little girl that just that resonated mightily in her heart. And we got the biggest amen. And sometimes, just as dear children, we need to say yes and amen. Okay. Go for it. Do you want to do the the 10 and up, 10 and 18, teenagers? So when I have the teenagers, 19 is a teenager too. And we call you tweenagers. Some of you over 10, so 11 and up to about 20. If you hit 20, we'll get to you. Oh, my goodness. Just like I prophesied over Anne-Marie, I just believe that you guys are world changers also. I saw um, politicians. I saw teachers. I saw, um, and I even see, uh, Brennan, I I see God using you to bring um, the secular and the sacred together in the entertainment industry. I see the Lord using you to be in, in music and in, in whatever you're doing and bringing the peace of God to the set. Whatever the set is about, it doesn't have to be religious. Like even uh, um, Sean Bowles prophesied to somebody in the Marvel in, in Endgame. But I just see God using you in the entertainment industry. Um, and I see somebody... Um, Inventing a new app. I see one of you guys creating a new app and um, just revolutionizing. Um, even, even bringing the presence of God into it and not just my, being religious. But I see God, honestly, all, all, of, all of you, I, got, I see God lifting off the labels that have put on you. On. Not good enough. Not strong enough. Not pretty enough. I just see God saying, no, no more. 
And I just see the Holy Spirit just giving you his truth of who you are, your identity in him as sons and daughters. Yes. That the voice that he's going to cause you to listen to is his. And that um, I just see the springboard of, of the things that you carry now into your youth group and bringing his presence in in a brand new way. It doesn't have to look like your moms and dads. Come on. It's going to look like what God has for you yes. in this season. Yes. Yes. So I bless you guys in Jesus' name. Stay Amen. standing. <laughs> <laughs> I love our teens. We've got a few of them. If you're in this room or online, I want you to extend your hands to these mighty ones. Yes. Thank you, God. From the Father's heart and the Father's eyes, I bless you and keep you. I will make my face shine upon you, and I will go with you. I will give you great, great peace, peace that surpasses all understanding. So though you're walking through valleys of shadow and death, you will fear no evil. So teenagers say, no evil. Because no. <laughs> thy rod and thy staff, they will comfort you. God has given you something in your right hand, so take it right now. Some of you, that's a microphone. Some of you, it's a pen. Some of you, it's buttons for lights. And I'm thinking of even the Hamilton. If you haven't seen it, check it out with parental permission. Plugs. I love plugs. Why are you writing like you're running out of time? God is putting his words in your heart, mighty ones. Release those words. Mm. As a dad, you can put your hands down at the moment. I'm sorry for taking you guys for granted. I'm sorry I've not encouraged you to lift you up to your fullest potential. But this day, as a godly father, I wrap my arms around you. I'm lifting you up to higher heights. Allow my ceiling to become your floor. Amen. I'm not going to cut you down anymore. I'm going to raise you up, build you up. Use my shoulders as your strength. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Bless you. You may be seated. One of the things Jared was saying earlier that our words are here to comfort you. You don't have to need Matt and Shireen's to be encouragers. But just like we peeled off those labels on the teens, there's labels that have been put on your life. Take right now, just brush those off. Oh. Anything that is not of God, let it fall to the floor. But likewise, the living God that resides in you, he's given you a word. And as you pass somebody in the highways, the byways, even in the bathroom stall, you look good. You, you is kind. <laughs> you is important. You is amazing. Some of you know what that's from, too. <laughs> but I want you to remember this day that you are so important. God sees you. God recognizes your potential. And he's not only sitting there saying, you can do it. He's your biggest cheerleader. He's better than Gatorade to reinfuse your body. He's living in you, saying, let's go. Let's take that leap. I have one more thing. I, I kind of wanted to share my testimony. Um, I, I struggled with um, depression for most of my life. Um, it became clinical for a while. Um, I was on medication, pregnant. I, I, I remember like it getting worse, pregnant with my first child, not thinking, um, that God had more for me. But um, I just felt one of the things, if, you're, if you want to stand up, if you don't want to, but just receive, I just, I'm seeing, 
um, just the Lord partnering with the spirit of love over depression today. Anxiety. Um, so, yeah, if, if you've struggled with depression, even suicidal thoughts, um, I just, if you would stand up and I can just pray over you. Thank you. Wow, brave. That's so brave. Thank you, guys. It's huge. God wants to speak to you today. God loves you so much. And the, uh, Lord Jesus, I thank you for these ones that have stood. I thank you that in this place of, um, you know their pain. God sees everything you have walked through. He sees, he sees you in your night seasons. He sees what you think about yourself. And he just loves you so much. God, I just, I just want to wipe away. Just lift the burdens, God, for your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And I thank you, Father, for seeing them. You know their name. You see their heart. You know what they're walking through. And I, I just, one of the things that I walked through this year was self-compassion, compassion for me. So I want you to put your hand on your heart right now. And I want you to close your eyes and pretend you're looking at yourself in the mirror and say to yourself, self, please forgive me for being so mean to you, for criticizing you, for comparing you to others, for making you feel like you're not good enough. God loves, God loves you. I love you. You were created for purpose. And I commit today to partner with the Holy Spirit and speaking kind things to you and catching myself when that criticalness comes up and just accepting you for who you are, not listening to the judging words of anybody else, but listening to what God says over you. I bless you. I bless you. You're beautiful. You're amazing. And God, I just pray that you would partner with them, that they would hear your voice so clearly today. That, yes, they, if they need to go to a doctor and they need medication, that's all under grace, and what you have for them is more. Where the enemy has stolen, God, you have got, come to bring life in that more abundantly. So in this place and today, we just put the stake in the ground and say we love you and we trust you, God, and we commit to partnering with you and your word. God, we just bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you, mighty ones. So as we start to wrap things up, I kind of want to leave you with 1 Chronicles 17, 24. And we were saying this Friday night as we were praying for your church and upon this region. And as Shireen was saying, put that stake in the ground. This is your home. This is your land. It's worth fighting for. So let it be established that your name may be magnified forever, saying, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, is Israel's God. And let the house of your servant David be established before you. Say the word established. 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 Establish this day. You guys have made a covenant, and God is honoring that. Even being here today, I took a step and said, yes. And this is the day the Lord has made, and it is good. We will rejoice. We will overcome. We are victorious. We equals me, you, and God. When you add God to any equation, it becomes a majority. Amen. The impossible becomes possible. Mm -hmm. Beyond anything you could ask or imagine is now 
within reach. The 35,000 people that are going to watch this message today. Get ready, church. The walls were not meant to contain us. The ceiling cannot stop us. One plus God is the majority. So we bless you today with all that he has in store for you. We bless your spirits to connect with the Holy Spirit to receive so much abundantly more than you could ask or imagine. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, guys. It's just interesting. I, as they were praying for depression, I, I do, I, I, I am believing. I, don't, I can't remember if they actually said the words, but I, I do feel like there's healing on your mind, actually, like physical healing, you know, uh, in some of those. I don't know anything about the mind, brain, and all that. So I'm just believing those, those wavelengths. God was just really healing up uh, and removing things that don't need to be there that have been trying to steal out of that. Um, but it's really cool, I, and I just love, um, you know, some of those words are really cool. Um, you know, Twyla, I don't know if y'all, you know, when he was declaring over Twyla, you know, creativity and then teaching, you know, that's what she's studying for as she's going to school, and she's a little, uh, I don't know, it's pre-elementary, uh, right? Yeah, and she, she works back here in our daycare, so it's just amazing to kind of, it's funny to watch sometimes when Lord prophesies over people, and you're like, "Oh, yep, that that's for her." And uh, so, um, but I, I'm gonna let Jared. Yep. Uh, so I was just talking to Leanne. We're just a few things, um, just to kind of seal everything up today. Uh, the reality is, is God is not an exclusive God, right? Um, he doesn't just see a few of us. His eyes are on everyone, um, all the time. Uh, my kids ask all the time, "How can He hear everybody on the earth at the same time?" Um, it's beyond my mind to think how he does that, um, but the reality is he just does. Um, his mind is on all of us individually all the time. He knows everyone's hair is on their head, not just mine. Everyone on the earth, everyone who's ever been born and everyone who's, who is still not to be born, he knows their name, he knows how many ha hairs on their head. It's just mind-blowing um, that he's, he's that detailed and that concerned about everybody, um, that intimately acquainted with everyone. Um, so few things we just wanted to do real fast. I uh, don't want to hold you up. Um, the reality is that sometimes things are spoken. Um, not everybody gets called out to stand up all the time. Um, doesn't mean that you're not valuable to God. Um, there's times and moments that God calls certain people out, and there's other times for you to be called out. When one body, part of the body rejoices, we all rejoice. When one part of the body hurts, we all hurt, right? We're one together. Um, so something may have been spoken to someone else. You may have felt some weight on that. If so, receive it right? Um, just because you weren't called out for it, if you felt weight with it, then hold it. Um, there's also a reality. Um, just because God didn't speak to Matt and Shereen for you today doesn't mean that God can't speak to you where you're sitting at or that he can't speak to you on the way home. Um, me and a friend of mine have been doing this thing where we spend two minutes a day and we try to spend two minutes a day every day just going before God and asking for the thing that our heart most wants and sitting for two minutes and allowing God to give that to us. Um, Everyone has access to go and hear God. Everyone has access to go and ask questions. Everyone has access to hear him anytime. He will speak. Um, so I just wanted to pray that real fast. I was going to let Leanne pray something too. Um, but uh, that's okay. Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, but God, I just, um, I declare that God, you are not, um, you are not an exclusive God. God, you are so inclusive. And God, I just pray that everyone, everyone that's here today, God, that every ear would be opened and every eye would be seen, God, would be open, God, that we would see, that we would hear exactly what you want us to see and hear, God. God, if there's questions that have been asked that they didn't get answers for today, God, I know that you're faithful to answer. God, I pray for the answers to come. God, I pray for the desires, God, where people have held things before you for years, God. I pray for, for strength, God, to keep holding, keep waiting. 
God, I just I bless them with, with answers, God. And God, I just declare over them that if there's something that was spoken that maybe wasn't even specifically that they were called out for, God, if it felt like it stuck, then God, let it stick. God, it was for them too. So um, one of the things I would like to do is I would like to, for you to stand up, and we're going to bless you too. Because it says that if you receive a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. And so our body wants to receive. And so we want to bless you. And what you're walking into and the pathway that's before you. There's even words that both of you spoke this morning that you're like, whoa, that's for me. <laughs> and, uh, and the Lord was just stringing some, some strings in your heart. I could see that as you both were processing and going through this and going, wow, this feels good. And hope, oh, nope, would do that different this time. Like he was just sitting and moving and just enjoying being with you and delighting with what you were doing and how you were doing it with us and the body. So as the body, could you just stand? This is our way to just join in and say, yes, we receive what the Lord brought and the testimony that God brought. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Jesus was here, and we, we talked a lot about Jesus this morning. And so we want to bless the Jesus inside both of you. We say yes and amen to the promises that are before you, that um, the good path that he's put before you. I also want to bless the sacrifice that you both made in your marriage mm -hmm. and with your family to walk into some of these things. You chose to go counter to what some of the advice that was given to you. You chose to go counter to it, to be able to follow his voice. And so I bless that in Jesus' name. I, and those voices that um, were almost like Job's friends in your life, they're going to see the testimony and they're going to have an encounter. They're going to have a reckoning to it. And it's going to be blessed because you blessed them. You didn't curse them for speaking what they spoke to you, but you blessed them because you understood their heart was just saying, I love you. And uh, I want to protect you. So because of that, I just see a, a fold coming in. So as a body, we say we bless you in Jesus' name. Go forward. Go forward in your work. Go forward in the things that God has designed for you. We bless your children for the things that they are walking in so that you too can be released and that you're setting the ceiling higher and you're going to let them go and run. I bless you to have wisdom as you do that with your children, great wisdom that you need. And I, I even see there's a couple questions that the kids are having right now that you need wisdom and how do you answer it. And so I just pray for nuggets to come right now, just the Holy Spirit to come on you from the top of your head and move through your whole bodies right now to bring you healing, restoration. This trip has worn on you a little bit, and we just pray blessing this morning because you chose to give to us. So we bless them, and we receive the reward. We say yes, body. We say yes together. Yes. We receive the reward of the prophet this morning. And so just in that, as a body, I just, um, I want us to, to take hold of what Jared said. So if you guys could just raise your hand up. It's a prophetic way of just saying, I want it. It's simple. You do this in school all the time. Hey, I got the answer. Well, this one is, I want the answer. And this one is raising the hand and saying, I want the answer. There was a lot of words spoken this morning, and it is true. He spoke to the body. He spoke to his bride. Individuals received some of that word so that they could walk in the health of what he has called them to do and thrive. Because if they thrive, we thrive. If you thrive, I thrive. If I thrive, you thrive. If I mourn, you mourn. If you rejoice, I rejoice. That is the beauty of the body. So we receive that. We bless every word that was spoken this morning. Have fruit in Jesus' name. Grow and be blossom and have your way. The word of God will not come back void. Anything, anything that is not of the Lord that was a thought or, or a fear or anything, we just call it dead right now in its tracks. We call it dead in its tracks. It doesn't have to manifest. It doesn't have to develop. It doesn't have to go anywhere. But everything of the Spirit of the Lord, we say, do what you do best. Multiply in Jesus' name. Your kingdom multiplies. And so we receive and we take hold of it. Can you guys say yes and amen to that? There were some good words this morning, right? Amen. I just felt like I needed to be obedient. During worship, there was this little pause and there was a giggle, but one of the guys just 
he just yelled out, good job, Grant, good job. And I felt like, like, I felt like, oh, we're supposed to stop. And I just feel like there's a cheering on for you and Amy. I just felt like the heart of God. And I just feel like we need to clap for them. We just honor y'all and thank God for y'all. I I just felt like there's just something. We're just cheering you on. So, Amen. (laughs) I know you love getting called out as much as we do. Uh, (laughs) So I'm I'm just going to close this out. Can can, can I have the prayer team and then maybe these guys can? Oh, Allison's going to play? Oh, (laughs) I guess the... uh, something on the keyboard. Um, so I, I just want you to be encouraged this morning. Um, I just really heard that, that, that the Lord was really, again, when uh, Matt said, you know, the biggest call that he got in his life was not what the prophet said. Like he was expecting it. He's like, man, I hope I get it. I hope I get this word. And all of a sudden, what happened? He actually heard it from the Lord himself. So I just want to encourage you this week. I want you to be listening. This really was a, 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 a time to really just stir you up to listen, to understand that God does speak. But God, I'd encourage you to listen because he wants to speak to you. Like I said, maybe you didn't get a word this morning like Jared and them said. I encourage you, hey, the Lord's trying to, going to speak to you this week in just different ways. Just be open to hearing. So that's what I want to pray. Um, I want to pray that, and if, obviously, if you don't know the Lord this morning, uh, I think He's speaking to you. Today is the day. Today is the day of salvation. That's a good prophetic declaration. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, so that that's an awesome opportunity to come and and get prayer this morning. And uh, Marguerite just declared, said again that shame was uh, she just still feels like it's on some people. So she'll she'll pray for you. Any of these guys will pray for you uh, in that area. And just healing. I just felt like healing too. Uh, God wanted to do something. So I just want to pray for us. And if you need prayer this morning, come 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 get it before you leave the the uh, house this morning. And so we thank you for that. Anybody? Anything else? So Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for. Uh, God, just your heart, Lord, just uh, uh, as Matt and Shereen were just sharing, Lord, it's just your heart, Lord, just to be open to speak to your children, Lord, sometimes it's really good just to take a, a minute just to, to hear, Lord, I, I, Lord it's, I know sometimes we can hear those messages, and Lord, I, I know I love teaching, uh, I love sharing, but God, sometimes we just need, Lord, just maybe those times to stop and listen and hear. So I just pray that for us this week, God, that you've stirred something in us to hear, to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church, to us as individuals, to us as a church. And Lord, we want to hear. We want to bend our ears to hear. Tune our ears to hear this week. Tune our, 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 our voices to, to ask and declare, God, Lord, just speak, Lord. I'm listening. And so, Lord, I just thank you for that, and we just bless Matt and Shireen, and we just give you praise uh, just for just how you've been walking with them and how you're going to continue to walk with them. So, Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to encourage you. We're, as a church, we're going to bless them with uh, some finances. So if you want to bless them, feel free to just throw it in the envelope and put a special offering on it or something. Throw it in the um, offering box online. Special events, if you want to deem that online, you can do special events. Also online, if you're still online with us, feel free to hit that uh, prayer button and live prayer, and you can get prayer. Amen? Amen. Thanks for coming. Enjoy your week.